thank you so much, Dr. Gandhi sir, for those kind words of introduction. I thank even IDEC for inviting me tonight here. I understand it's a last lecture for tonight, and I call it the showstopper molecule on which I will be discussing here today. So before wasting much time, and I won't come in your way, uh, for having dinner and cocktail party. So, dual power saga of vildagliptin and dapagliflozin combination therapy. What a molecule, I would say. Yeah, we all know type 2 diabetes is a progressive disease. At diagnosis, there is a 50% beta cell function already. So, the disease actually starts maybe 10, 12 years before the patient is diagnosed and as the duration of diabetes progresses, there is further decline in the beta cell function. So the core defects of type 2 diabetes, we all know, there is insulin resistance as well as problems with islet cell, may it be alpha cell and beta cell, both leading to the uh, disease per se. Now the glycemic control Throughout our practice, we have seen it is not just one agent which has helped the patient throughout their life. All patients are put on diet and lifestyle modifications, but eventually, as the duration progresses, it does fail. Adding one agent like metformin eventually must, does fail. Adding drugs like sulfonylureas, if they were long-lasting, of course, they could have controlled the sugars throughout their life. They, I think there would have never been um, uh, studies on finding out new molecules. So as the duration of diabetes worsens or progresses, most of the agents are ineffective, which has been proven. Along with that, the prescriptions are definitely not just one drug, so adherence is also an issue. And adherence is an issue because it's a multi-system disease, complex guidelines, progressive disease, needing a lot of pharmacotherapy. So most of the patients have so many drugs in their prescription. So it is time for synergy. We need something which has got multiple pathophysiological mechanisms, not only for control of hyperglycemia. Diabetes is a disease where we are not looking only at the numbers of sugars, we are looking the benefits beyond glycemic control. So non-glycemic benefits are equally important and the drugs which are to be used, of course, should not cause hypoglycemia. Neither anybody is interested in weight gain. So the challenge here is, as I said, type 2 diabetes is no more only a glucocentric um, issue. We have to look at even cardiocentric approaches, beautifully mentioned by all previous speakers about the various effects of drugs like dapagliflozin. We all know hyperglycemia happens because of this ominous octet, a very famous diagram. Everyone knows about it. I would say just I'll touch base it quickly. Decreased insulin secretion because of the pancreatic beta cell dysfunction, reduced incretin effect, increased lipolysis. There is increased glucose absorption by the kidney, a very important organ. There is reduced glucose uptake by the peripheral muscle tissue. The neurotransmitter dysfunction increased hepatic glucose output and of course glucagon increase by the alpha cell. So we need to target these two and what a combination if we come up with uh, two drugs coming together who act on these different uh, parts of the ominous octet, vildagliptin and dapagliflozin together. What we call as um, marriage of two um, highly competent individuals coming out with some beautiful results. So combination of two therapies will give a synergistic and beneficial effect. So this synergy is important because we get complementary glucose lowering activities. Dapagliflozin through the action of kidneys has an indirect effect on the pancreatic cell by improving the pancreatic cell function. Also, glucosuria causes weight loss, which is what we want. There is a cardiovascular effect in the form of reduced systolic blood pressure, and this leads to benefits on the pleiotropic effects. Similarly, vildagliptin, if it acts on the, through the gut, 
It leads to improved uh, insulin secretion through the pancreatic beta cell, and more importantly, it reduces glucagon, which prevents the hepatic glucose output. The incretin effect in turn leads to improved GLP-1 and GIP action, and that is the reason of the weight neutrality what has been expressed by Vildagliptin. Now, we all want some synergistic benefit, especially for Asian Indians. We practice here, we want benefits for our patient, the thin fat type phenotype, who is more prone to develop type 2 diabetes at early age, with already has a decline in beta cell mass, there is higher insulin resistance seen, we all are carbohydrate dominant uh, consumers, so a lot of calorie intake is there, and nowadays with urbanization, lack of physical activity. This has led, of course, to central obesity, unique dyslipidemia pattern. We, our patients are at increased cardiovascular risk, and higher association with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is what has been even mentioned by our previous speakers. So, along with this, our Indian patients typically, even though non-obese, have more activity of this, especially DPP-4 enzyme. And if we inhibit this DPP-4 enzyme uh, early in the uh, disease um, history, we will be able to achieve better glycemic control. So there were studies which were done to see the efficacy of DPP-4 inhibitors. Asians versus non-Asians, and uh, if we see here, the benefits seen on Asians in reduction of HbA1c is better than non-Asians. Similarly, efficacy of SGLT2 inhibitors was looked at compared to whites and Asian population in diabetes. What was seen as the glucose-lowering efficacy of SGLT2 inhibitors was greater in studies which were predominantly done on, in, on Asian ethnicity as compared to the whites. So that is also something which we can, we should keep in mind. Now enhanced glucose lowering function is what we see is uh, especially gliflozins. This gliflozins are um, Typically, the treatment results in substantial increase in endogenous glucose production, and this leads to um, fasting hyperglycemia, especially because of increase in plasma glucagon concentrations, which can happen with gliflozins. If we add a gliptin, this helps in inhibition of this glucagon, and gliptins also improve the beta cell function, so they improve insulin secretion, and this may potentially block the increase in endogenous glucose production, extremely important factor. So to enhance the glucose lowering ability of gly gliflozins, addition of gliptin should be a better um, combination to help reach the glycemic goal. Now, all these new entrants are extremely essential because science is evolving. We need new and new molecules for benefit of our patients. So newer FDCs are important for effective treatment of our patients. Vildagliptin, let's look at the various effects. Can it be used as a first-line therapy? In elderly type 2 diabetes, is it safe? In long-standing diabetes, is it safe? We do have a lower risk of hypoglycemia. We have been using it as an add-on to insulin. We have been using it in obese patients. Renal safety data is also adequate. Cardio safety data is adequate and with less glycemic variability. With so many benefits of Vildagliptin clubbed together with clinical benefits of dapagliflozin, where not only glucose urea, but the excess calorie which the patients have been consuming are lost, and this also leads to weight loss. And the cardiac benefits being the glucose urea, the natriuresis, as we were talking about, the osmotic diuresis, which helps in blood pressure reduction. Of course, reduction in the doses of diuretics, optimizing water intake, monitoring of their electrolytes does become important when we are combining these uh, two molecules so that we do not want any adverse effects. So the combination uh, um, tackles the core defects of type 2 diabetes. 
So insulin resistance is tackled by dapagliflozin and islet cell dysfunction is tackled by vildagliptin. So appropriate clinical applications of this particular FDC of Vilda and Dapa, I call it the showstopper molecule for tonight, Patients of type 2 diabetes with higher HbA1c values who are uncontrolled on standard of care should receive additional drug in the form of gliptin plus gliflozin and additional glucose lowering benefit is there with low risk of hypoglycemia as well as good efficacy and safety profile. Also patients who are having severe risk factors including heart failure mentioned by the previous speaker as well adding gliflozin with proven cardiovascular safety and heart failure benefits will be of use gliptin's cardiovascular safety uh, has been definitely uh, proven with no increased risk of hospitalization due to heart failure and therefore this FDC is preferred over the conventional therapies with no CV benefits. Again, this particular combination would help promote weight loss and prevent hypoglycemia as well as gliflozins cause weight loss properties, gliptins are weight neutral with low risk of hypoglycemia. So this FDC of gliptin plus gliflozin, the, um, we are always worried about genitourinary infections and the incidence of GUT infections favors the use of SGLT2 with DPP4 combined together will help only a drug which is used only who is causing glucosuria, there is a high chance of um, um, uh, fungal infections or urinary infections, but addressing the patients, giving them time, advising them for personal hygiene is of uh, extreme importance when we write such molecules and this combination does help. So to summarize here, Vildagliptin plus dapagliflozin is a suitable option for Indian type 2 diabetes patients for the following reasons, which are extremely important, I would say. Safer, rapid, and sustained glycemic control is what we want. They improve both insulin resistance and beta cell function. They help reduce body weight. They help control blood pressure, which are the extra glycemic benefits. Pill burden is equally important for adherence and compliance and the overall it is cost effective. Now with the molecule being off patent with the drive of make in India, why not go for such combinations which are even pocket friendly to our patients and give most benefit to them for better glycemic control as well as cardiovascular benefit. With this I would like to end my talk for tonight. I'll be happy to take questions if any.